Hey, road trippers, the hoop season is in full swing. Are you using the sleeper app for daily fantasy basketball? We are. You watch and listen to the podcast, and Richard Channing have made their sleeper picks of the week. So get some skin in the game and start playing fantasy basketball on the sleeper app. Turn your basketball knowledge into real money with the sleeper app. It's the ultimate fantasy sports app that can turn game day into payday. Just download the sleeper app and pick more or less on your favorite players. With more stats than any other fantasy app, just choose two or more of your favorite players from either pregame or live. It's as easy as that. Again, pick more or less from the predicted stats, and you could win up to 100 times your money if your picks win. Download and sign up on the Sleeper app today. Use our promo code ROADTRIPPIN, and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Sleeper is currently operational in over 25 states. Check out Sleeper today. Welcome into the life of road tripping. We don't know where Richard is. Surprise, surprise. Channing is worried about his shoe collection. What is your favorite Thanksgiving dish? Wine and pure laziness. (laughs) Oh, Lord. Richard. (laughs) You're on the show. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. What's wrong? Oh, there we go. Wait, wait a second. It says, it says getting studio information. Every time. But every time? It's, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best. It's, 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 look, these are technical difficulties. I did not write this code. Technical difficulties. You have them every week. At what point does it become the operator? <laughs> look, there's always, uh, there's always a percentage of human error. Okay, so for the people at home, I'm just gonna I'm gonna be vulnerable here for a second. Like, you have to weigh the pros and cons. And when unfortunately, because I live this close to the beach and the water and the sand and the ocean, it can become difficult to get like cell reception and like internet. So it's just I'm doing my best. Okay. Channing. Channing, give him the Richard Jefferson spiel when you want to sit on your high horse and you want to talk about how great life it is just, in perspective. He would come you at you I'm so just hard. Let it go. Can you, you know, please? It's a week of Thanksgiving. Well, the problem is I actually appreciate that. I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> I'm being sarcastic. Speaking of, we're diving right in. Welcome to the Road Trip and Podcast. My name is Allie. He is Channing Fry, and I don't know who the hell the guy on the right is. I think his name is Richard Jefferson, whose internet never works. Having said that, speaking of someone who takes the high road, this is going to be a quick episode, LeBron James. How impressive is it here in season 21? Can you guys give me your thoughts about what we're seeing, what we're watching? Because <laughs> at uh, some point, you got to talk about the, it. The problem is <laughs> We've he got doesn't to need it. more motivation. And the more shit that people talk, the more he locks in. This man has, he's not making movies. He's not worried about anything else. And he like, man, I can see the end. So why don't I just go dumb hard? It's not like he's 30. He's like, man, I only got maybe a year or two. I'm going to play as much as I can, as hard as I can right now. And showing somebody like him the end means that he's not leaving anything in the tank, which is scary for the rest of the league. Or like some of these young guys, like, oh, I got another year or I'm 27. I could get here again. He's like, no, no, homie, we're we're doing this. And his team needs him to do it, which is even crazier. And he's my favorite part is that he's still such a petty dick. That's my favorite part. That's my favorite part. It's like, don't ever. Which part? Explain. When he post, when, when someone posted and he reposted on his story, he reposted on his story. It was like, uh, LeBron field goal, LeBron assist, LeBron assist. And he's like, uh, I'm just trying to do my part. <laughs> then he has like a crown and a, it's like, you fucking petty dick. I'm just trying to do my part. If I'm just trying to be a good teammate. And it's just like LeBron assist, LeBron field goal, LeBron assist, LeBron assist, field goal, LeBron. He reposts that. This he reposted some other fucking website. Post this. He sees it. And it's like, hey, I'm just trying to be a good teammate. It's like you <laughs> fucking petty dick. It's just like fucking respect. I respect it. I mean, could you imagine being at that point of your career where you're just wow? The blonde that is. Oh, I saw okay. that. And I was like, yeah. Bron, Bron. We haven't addressed this, and we haven't. We have like he did smoke the layup. That's fine, right? He Touché. smoked the layup. That's fair. But passing the blood, you don't give a now, fuck. Bron, listen. He on his way out. I'm telling you, he come he on fucking, now. He come needed on. for the hey, he needed That's for his uh, chronic tendonitis, yeah, like, for his glaucoma. 
Chronic. <laughs> yeah, his glaucoma and his tendonitis. It is needs arthritis. Glaucoma. His arthritis, glaucoma. Yes, that was. Allie's never seen Friday, so she doesn't know about the glaucoma. Oh Allie. damn it! I hate when I ruin moments like yep. that. Yep. So, yep. so so do we, Allie. So do we. Yeah. Dick. Yeah. Um, having said that, um, all right. So we're all impressed with LeBron. Um, after a six and two start, let's change directions. The Warriors have now lost six games in a row. Last five have been home games. Um, how are you guys? How are you guys kind of breaking them down right now? It hurts my heart because Clay Thompson's on my fantasy team and he's been trapped. I'm literally supposed to win by 50 points. I lose by 10. So, like, you feel bad, right? Because Clay is because you're. No, yeah, no, you feel bad because like Clay plays the game the right way and something just ain't clicking. Right? Him and Wiggins still just it clicks a little bit, then it doesn't. Then it like it, there's something missing on that Warriors team that like I, I just can't put my finger on it. They just people are like, we still remember when they were beating the shit out of everybody. So they're like, nope, it's our turn now. Like that summer, they got old. It's like maybe that's it. They got very I don't know what it is. I don't stress as much just because Steph has missed some time. Draymond has missed some time. And we know the importance of Draymond to their entire equation, right? To their entire equation. Like, that's why he still gets paid $30 million, $25 million. And they signed him to a multi-year extension because they know. So for him to be gone, then because it, it's been little things. Wiggins struggled. He finally played well. Okay, dope. We give that to Wiggins, right? Like, great. Good. If he can start giving them 18 to 20 and not shooting 50% from the free throw line, 28% from three, and 30% from the field. If he's not doing that, which makes no sense because he's so athletically gifted, at any point in time, he could say, fuck it, I'm just going to go drive, right? That's the part that's frustrating about Wiggins. So I don't I don't worry about them. I don't. I don't. Six in a row, Draymond's missed three, four games. They OKC, who we know to be a very, very good team, they lose two in overtime, and, like, Chet is fucking balling out. So it's like... Draymond would I if if they're healthy even if they're not playing great I feel like they win that game the Warriors the 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 Warriors win that mm. game so it's like yeah this is a tough moment they just got to stay together do I think that they're I think they're still a top four team I think if they're healthy if they're healthy and Clay if Wiggins can get back to fifteen if if, if, if that's a lot no, of no, ifs no, Richard just, that's a lot of ifs. hear me out hear me out well, hear me you know. out. If Wiggins doesn't have to get to all star form, but if he can get to 15 a game on respectable shooting, if Clay can get back to 35 to 40 percent from three, which we believe will happen over a long sample size, right? We believe that. Like he's off to a tough start. He's fucking old. That type of shit happens, right? You don't come out the gates unless you're fucking LeBron James, right? Everybody else can have some shit. So that's all. That's all. And Clay got off to slow starts the last couple of years. So I'm not as stressed. It was just there's more heightened because there's no Jordan Poole. Like Draymond's been out and all this and Wiggins has been playing like fucking shit. So it was like now everyone has a spotlight on them because there's so many of them struggling in the early going. Obviously, you had your fun with the whole Draymond situation. We recorded before that happened last week with Rudy Gobert and that incident. What was kind of your thoughts and and how does he kind of re- I don't yeah, know if the word? They're, no, they're, they're making fun of him on SNL. Like he's a pop culture villain. He doesn't you know, he doesn't, there's no, so we just move on. Like it, didn't we happen. just move on. It is what it is. We just move on. No, he just, you know, the biggest thing, honestly, it was like, all right, that's Draymond being Draymond. And the NBA's like, all right, enough of that. Right. But my thing is the biggest thing is, and the Timberwolves are good. Everyone saw it was cause cat had a chance to hemp Draymond up. Right. <laughs> Anthony Edwards had a chance to hemp Draymond up and they all just let Rudy get choked yeah, out. I- and you were just like, come on. No, but it's like, think, come but, on. No, man. but this, is, boy this is my thing, though, is that you could have got him uh, off of no, what you guys have done. No, 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 here, no, no, Dude, no, you're not choking no, no, Richard no. out as much as I hate him. You're not choking him out like that. Here, here a, a little here, bit, a little bit. I'm gonna let you get one here, little, but uh, hear me, hear, yeah, hear, I'm make hear me out. out. No. That was Rudy cute. went in there Richard. to break it up. Draymond went in there. Draymond went in there. He'd been waiting. Draymond had been waiting. So he went in there. To escalate. Yeah. And so even Rudy is like, Rudy doesn't know what's going on, right? Rudy's like, what the hell? The reason why he had to keep dragging him is because if Rudy got his footing 
and was able to stand up and be like, what are you doing, little fella? Right? So, like, yeah. that, that, that's what I'm saying. So, it's like, when I watch that, what I, what I, this is what I'm going to say about it. At first, Steve Kerr was defending Draymond as typically they, they do in, in the Golden State because they have to because he's one of those people that if you don't defend him, then he feels like everyone's against him. So they try and rally around him and insulate him. And Steve Kerr does a good job, even with some of his challenges. And so he tries to like show Draymond that he has his back because he's that emotional guy. After the thing, Draymond, he was trying to defend Draymond after the initial incident. But something happened where Steve Kerr changed his tune very quickly and was like, it was a bad look for the league. That was an unsafe thing. And Draymond, we will, they, didn't, they weren't appealing the suspension. Steve Kerr changed his tune. Yeah. So the, do you see the video? What do you mean? Is yeah, that going to be as simple as he just solved the no, video? No, no, no. He it? was there. He was telling Draymond, but it was more of nah, like, I'm I sure don't he know. He watched the video a that. million times, right? Before his- and, and again, at halftime, he probably watched the video. My point is, is that there was a message in my, maybe from the league that was sent to the Warriors. It's like, don't you dare try and defend this. Don't you dare. This is terrible. Because it is. It's a bad look for the league. It's a bad look for the players. One of the things about the association is the National Basketball Association. That means we are all associated. That means the minute one person does something, it is all we're directly, uh, like, effect, like, we're all directly affected by it. Right? And so something got to Steve where Steve was like, that was inappropriate. Draymond was out of line. It was dangerous. And he said it was a bad look for the league. It was a bad look for blah, blah, blah. And, you know, Draymond has to learn from this and we'll move on. That That's a very different statement than what Steve Kerr typically has given in response to Draymond over multiple years. To just say you're, yeah. he was flat out wrong. We know that. He knows that. Like, I thought Draymond's little it. podcast afterwards was very hilarious. He was like, yeah, I saw a chance. I took it. I'm like, damn. God, all right, well, keep it real. He didn't run from it. <laughs> but can yes. we can we have some honest conversations here? Yes. I thought all of our conversations were honest. No, 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 no. no. The problem with some of that, and you guys know I love Draymond. Like, all right, totally. We, we have defended Draymond on, on this podcast. But do y'all remember there was an incident maybe – in a public place with a former oh, cat. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. It's like mm-hmm. sometimes sometimes the energy that's on the court it will, won't be the same energy you have oh, yeah. when you see people in public. And that's my that. thing. If you're not going to behave like this, like if you're not going to behave like that at all times, like if you're not a tough guy at all times, like, and that does, I'm not talking about the energy and the intenseness and this, but this is where I talk about some t- guys will do things because they are insulated versus when things happen. Oh, if I see you in the streets and what we are we all talking know about, what Richard? we're talking about, and that was a very different moment. That's very different. Yeah, let's have an honest conversation, God, look, Richard. Look, I'm just saying there are reported incidents of people catching other people in spaces and it's like, oh, we want to talk tough now. Yeah, we want to talk tough now, and apparently the answer was no. <laughs> the answer was no. I do not want to talk talk tough right now. But that happens with lots of people. It's like who, who what your persona is on the court. Back in the day, in the nineties, would have to be that yeah. would have to be your persona off the court too, at all times. I dare all of you to go search who that individual was because they were not sleeping. Having said that, guys, who are your sleeper picks? We're going to dive right into that. Each of you give the audience a player you think is primed to go off this week and score more than their sleeper projections. Who do you got? Okay, I'm going deep. I'm going to go deep, deep in the NBA bag. Only because I've watched the last two games. Keontae George. He's the point guard, starting point guard. He's a rookie for Utah. The kid is very good. And when we got to talk to their coach, they were like, yo, he's good. And Utah went toe-to-toe with Phoenix. Two games, right? Lost in overtime. They're giving him the ball. He's starting after, like, five games. Like, he's one of those guys that – I was thinking Jordan Clarkson, but Jordan's been getting buckets, so I imagine his numbers are going to be high. But those guys, Jordan Clarkson, Lowry, they like playing with the kid. And I, I'm going to say him. I'm going to go a random – I think he's going to make all-rookie team. And I think he's going to – I think his numbers are going to boost because he just started starting. Jordan Hawkins. Oh, now he's switching it up. That's a great pick. 
Jordan Hawkins. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, he got from a the Pelicans. Strap. Yeah. Oh, dog. It is crazy. Way thrower. He's coming Way off just strap. Yeah, what? yeah. And and it's when, once you get that confidence yeah. and they're like, "Hey, son, this is what you do." If they see any daylight, that is in the NBA. You could be a very good shooter in college in this if you get to the nba and you have that type of like flamethrower you will get the most confidence boost you've ever well, shooted every when you're playing time with you guys like every Zion time you touch and it, brandon shoot. ingram who drives it all and needs space they're like that we need shoot. you to, we need to play four on four if we can play four on four or three on three we will win this game 90 percent of the time hot yeah there's a there this is a great thompson oh, Hawkins, when he lively George Thompson. Yeah, when he punched on um, uh, Clint Capella, I was like, "Holy crap!" Yeah, yeah, y'all. He a grown man. Both of them are. That's why I'm just saying this. Uh, this crop of rookies is a very is a very it impact yeah. early. They're all like young still. Chet obviously, but he's kind of not yeah. a rookie. But still, this is his first year. So making an all rookie team is going to be <sighs> yeah. that's shit going to be hard this year. Crop dusting. What you what you know about crops, Richard? Well done. I'm proud of both of you for those picks. Hey, road trippers. The hoop season is in full swing. Are you using the sleeper app for daily fantasy basketball? We are. You watch and listen to the podcast, and Richard Channing have made their sleeper picks of the week. So get some skin in the game and start playing fantasy basketball on the sleeper app. Turn your basketball knowledge into real money with the sleeper app. It's the ultimate fantasy sports app that can turn game day into payday. Just download the sleeper app and pick more or less on your favorite players. With more stats than any other fantasy app, just choose two or more of your favorite players from either pregame or live. It's as easy as that. Again, pick more or less from the predicted stats and you could win up to 100 times your money if your picks win. Download and sign up on the sleeper app today. Use our promo code ROADTRIPPIN and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See sleepers terms of use for details. Sleeper is currently operational in over 25 states. Check out sleeper today. Steph Curry makes you believe you can do anything. And the Curry 11s are specifically designed with ultimate bounce, grip, and stability to allow everyone to do their thing. New generations of ball players are coming up and showing the basketball world that the old rules do not apply. The future is exciting, fast, positive, and hungry. This NBA season, rock with your favorite player and rep his shoes on and off the court. The Curry 11s are perfect for both the committed and casual ballers. The UA Warp Tech makes the shoe feel like it was designed for your feet. Locked in no matter what you do on the court. Stop in your tracks with dual density UA flow cushioning and traction. It's an emergency break you don't even notice. Steph's 11th signature shoe steps into the second decade of his sneaker career, pulling colorway inspiration from the wonders of a positive and modernized future on and off the court. Take these kicks with you when you leave the scrimmage and rep Under Armour wherever you go. So do your thing. Change the game. The Curry 11 Future Curry is available now at currybrand.com. Hungry road trippers? This holiday season, you might be looking for nutritious, convenient meals to keep you energized on jam-packed days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian approved and ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle, all while tackling your holiday to-do lists. For our meal kits, Richard Channing and myself all receive Factor's Calorie Smart Portion Meals. They average about 550 calories per serving. We're all busy as ever with the basketball season in full swing, so it's nice to know we can prepare a delicious and nutritious ready-to-eat meal in less than two minutes. Plus, I needed an extra boost to support my wellness goals this holiday season, so I opted to try Factor's Protein Plus Meals. This added 30 grams of protein or more per serving. The meals are delicious. So what are you waiting for, road trippers? Head to factormeals.com slash roadtrippin50 and use our promo code roadtrippin50 to get 50% off. That's promo code roadtrippin50 at factor.com slash roadtrippin50 to get 50% off today. What was one of the more crazy things? What was one of the more, I don't know. Give me something that stood out to you and kind of sat with you <sighs> over the last week in the NBA. That how the league moves on, how the league can move on without anybody. John Morant, one of the best players in the world. His name has not been mentioned. And let me say this, the media has purposefully not mentioned his name to a certain degree where it's like, hey, let him and his team like process this suspension. Let's no lie. But it's like he had a signature shoe. He was tops of the league. He was like he was the face. 
And now it, the Memphis Grizzlies are banged up. I just saw Marcus Smart is out. Their team is just awful. Right. Like they're they're fighting hard, but they just it's just a lot. So you just think about like when everyone thinks like you have a right and like you get a sense of entitlement, like the ratings are through the roof. Everything is crazy. So it's just like hopefully this is like a humbling moment, not just for him, but just for other players that get so like I am this person. It's like the league is going to move on quickly. How quickly the league went from Memphis being the team that, you know, people thought was the team of the future to they are gone, not talked about, their star player, nothing, everything. Just like it, Memphis never happened. Like Memphis has not been the dominant team in the Western Conference. It's disappeared in like a matter of no time. That's how fragile this shit is. And people don't appreciate it and understand it. That's the thing that kind of hit me this week. It's like, man, Memphis is so low. No nationally televised games. No one's talking about them. Like this Desert Bain from- is having a career year and yeah. everyone's like, so what? Yeah, so no, what? no, like, it, and that that part is like you, I you don't. It's not like a. It's a hopefully the lesson is learned by not just him, but just guys around the league. That man, this league does not care about you. It will. It is a business still. You need to maximize the platform, and then you're good. But if you walk around like, oh, I'm entitled to anything, they will not miss you. They don't. Oh, yeah. They they, and- they won't. And you know that they feel it inside the organization to an extent. And I mean this from a respectful place, but for example, the refs, the situation, it happens to a lot of guys, a lot of teams, et cetera. But when Taylor Jenkins goes off the way he does, he makes it very clear that there's only one time ever else in his career he's done such a thing. But you just know that frustration, all of that is just kind of piling up inside of there. Um, It's it's a great point that you're making. Yeah. uh, Mine is, I think we like coaching is making a bigger effect on teams now than I think in the past. I think in in this way, you look at Joel Embiid who won an MVP last year. He's by far and away better this year than he ever has been. Like he's averaging the most assists. He's playing in almost all the games. He's dominating in all the games. You look at a guy who's already the MVP of the league, and you're like, oh, how can he get better? And then you look, and like you're like, damn, I remove one guy, and I add a new coach who can talk to him and challenge him. And you're like, holy shit, he's things that I didn't even know he could do, he's doing it at an elite level. Mm-hmm. And his team is balling. Right? Yeah. So yeah. I'm impressed by the 76ers, right? And then – um yeah, and then you look at like obviously Indiana. You look at um, you know Dallas has been balling, right? You know, Houston. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I actually got to I got to agree with Channing. Agreeing with you, Richard. Go ahead. All I'm saying is like when you look at the three most important things, in my opinion, in the league: a point guard, a a a, a top like defender, like whatever defender, coach which we would say all three they had, like Dylan Brooks is still Dylan Brooks. I'm not speaking, but at least you know every day he's going to ch- take that challenge, right. right? And show competition and show the young guys around, the Jabari Smiths, the Jalen Greens, like show those guys like, like, hey, this is competing. Like, I don't give a shit who he is. We go compete. Right. And then you have a good point guard and a coach that is, is fucking very demanding. We know Ime will motherfuck you in a second. Yep. So it's like, <clears throat> when you get all of that in a pie, it's like, I'm not saying this is a playoff team. I'm just saying that they will be in the play and competing at the end of the season because they got three veterans, a veteran coach, a veteran point guard, and a veteran defender with talent, young talent around that's always going to be running and jumping and excited. It's just a matter of getting those idiots in the right place. I, I, I can't pull up, so don't like quote me entirely on this, but last night there was a situation, and I was thinking of, Channing, from your standpoint of a coach's effect. Um, there was the, the play call on the end where Dylan – jumped the passing lane and allowed LeBron to to activate, obviously, and do his thing. And um, he had mentioned that he shouldn't have gambled. It wasn't the right thing. But Ime was also able to say that was a bad decision yeah. by Dylan Brooks. And you just think of, like, with a player like that as well, like, would that, have, that conversation have been as aligned? And I thought just, like, initially, we're so early still in the season, just kind of the respect that 
you can see and the effect that a coach can have on a player. Dude, you look at like all those dudes were jackers last year and everyone was really like, what is Jalen Green? You know, he's just a dude who goes out there and scores. If you look at him, he's having up and down because he's reestablishing good habits. But like you go, holy shit, his trajectory was like, uh, maybe he's, which is great. Maybe he's Jordan Clarkson. Now you're like, oh, no, no, no. This dude's trajectory can he can also be successful and the team can be successful. And you look at like, you know, Jabari Smith, you look at like they're defending. I was watching that Clippers game. They were defending their ass off. All yeah. of them. And yeah. I was like, oh shit. And the ball is popping and moving. And it looks like they're, you know, and it's gonna take, they're gonna take their lumps sometimes. But like they are literally trying to play good basketball, which is hard for them over the last two or three years. They've been playing willy-nilly basketball. Yeah. Well, I, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say this. I remember I was watching a game when Ime was in Boston. And I remember, you know, Marcus Smart, that's the year he won Defensive Player of the Year. And I remember Marcus Smart took a shot or something. And Ime called him over. And, you know, the in, the in feed, the, the in house feed was right on them. And you could lip read uh, Ime just in a flat face go, you could shoot that shot in the first quarter. This is fucking winning time. Stop fucking up and let's win this game. And and Marcus looked at him and goes, okay. And it got steal, assist, steal, like charge. And it was just like for a coach to not necessarily yell, but be like, yo, fucker, that's not the time to do this. This is winning time. This mm-hmm. ain't you to shoot and be hero ball. Like win the game. And it yeah. was just like, play, 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 play. And you were like, if you got a coach that could talk to you in that way, good things are going to happen to your players. Yeah. So. Well, Allie, to your point, the Dylan. Mm-hmm. I was looking for the quote. Yeah. I'm sorry. But Dylan, no, but Dylan Brooks being able mm-hmm. to be coached like that. Think about when yeah. Jalen Green, think about when Jabari Smith Jr. Think about when Sengun, Sengun when these Big guys Sengun. hear, when they hear Dylan Brooks own up to a mistake, hear the coach mm-hmm. say, this was a mistake and we can't have that. All of those guys now are now more coachable because Dylan Brooks owns up and says it. Because you remember when one of our biggest criticisms of Dylan Brooks was when he was talking that trash in the postseason then wasn't talking to the media. And what we're finding out is that the team was was telling him not to do these things and then didn't have his back, and that's what the rumor is. But my point is this. When you're allowed to coach your team, your, your one of your better veterans, let's say your veteran player like that, then everyone else falls the fucking line. That was pop with Tim Duncan. Like, he would cuss Tim Duncan out first, and anybody else got something to say? And you're like, well, fuck, if he's talking to the best player we've ever seen like that, everybody else needs to shut up and just do it. And so Pop used to always say, like, I, he would like, the best thing that ever happened is that Tim let me coach him, right? And so if Dylan Brooks is allowing for that to happen, it means all the other young guys get to benefit. That's where I thought, in my opinion, back in the um, two, three months ago, where I thought Houston would have an, uh, have a, a good jump because we've seen Ime coach young stars before and have success. Now, those guys are further along, but he knows how to do the progression, in my opinion. Yeah, I did not think he would that quickly get them to all buy in all the time. And, like, you know what's crazy? He goes to Shingun almost like a point guard. He like he go. Oh, he's good. Hey, I, he They're was good. booming on uh, the Clippers the other day, and I was like, okay. Yeah. They, he's, he's, yeah, he's so, we, so we have them as a play-in team now. If you had to reassess them from what you see, I'm not saying playoffs, but if you had them competing for the seven and eight spot, if they were the eighth seed or they're the ninth seed, even ten, they have second thought. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, yeah, nine <laughs> or ten, yeah. But I'm just saying, they are they better than Utah? Utah's good. See, Utah, that's what I'm I, Utah, you would say eight. Utah, Utah is seven, eight. To well, me. I, just, I do really close. I want to put the put a bow on this and give the correct facts. Here was the exchange really quick between um, with Ime and uh, Brooks. Udoka said Brooks gamble on the entry pass to LeBron that led to the eventual game winning free throw wasn't a smart decision. Brooks said he wasn't close to getting the steal of, off the entry pass. I should have played straight up and let him shoot over his right shoulder for the game. Try to send them to overtime. That was my bad. Yeah. So I just wanted to like love, you know I love, love, love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Go on to Utah. Yeah. Go no, no I was saying Utah's good. good. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, I'm saying Utah's good. I already talked about them. I'm looking um hold on. 
playoffs. But jo- like Jordan Clarkson, um, like oh, I said, the, Keont- okay. the Keontae George guy, and the reason why they they put him in the starting lineup is they had Jordan Clarkson running point, they had Colin Sexton running point, and we know that those guys are more scores and they're dry, they're just aggressive scores. So it was like they're not true point or true like game managers. I would say I think yeah. point guard is a is a it's becoming an archaic term. It's more of like who's the game manager facilitator game manager and the kid george is that he yeah. is he's quick he's fast like he's looking to pass he pushes the break he gets lowry and gets jordan clarkson like two more open shots a game because of what he does and so utah utah has a chance to be very similar that they were last year very similar even though they're off to a bit of a start because i'm seeing them play the phoenix suns they went they went to a double double overtime last night I was watching with my boys and they were screaming and yelling because they get to stay up until the game is over and so double overtime for them they were screaming and yelling every time a shot was made so right now it's Houston Phoenix New Orleans Golden State Clippers and Utah that's seven through 12 so like you would say Phoenix is obviously going to get better New Orleans is going to get better Golden State's going to get better and I'm 50 50 on the Clippers but They're going to win. My games. argument was my argument was that they would be in the play in. Let's remember. And people shot that shit down. Now I'm like, I, I yeah. think they are a play. People or a channel. Every no, <laughs> lots of people. Lot when I jumped in on Dylan Brooks, because remember when he signed that deal, everyone, I was like, dude, Houston is doing very well for themselves right now. Yeah. Uh, you know what? It's gonna be tough. I right, it's gonna be tough because are you, sign, are you signing up? He doesn't, he doesn't want, want Are you signing up for that they will be in the play-in? Yeah, I got to say, they might be, yes, because they'll be. Yeah, tired. just just stop fighting and change. Just let it happen. He says, I got to say, they might be. Just let it happen. Just let it happen. No, I don't want to let it happen. Relax and let it happen. Relax <laughs> and let it happen. Um, all right. It is Thanksgiving. week. We're going to wrap up this episode. So happy Thanksgiving to all of our viewers and our listeners. We appreciate you. We're thankful for yes, you. Yes. Very yes, thankful. We on those very. But we're going to end with this. Truth or trash. Shit. Cranberry sauce needs to be out of a no. trash. Oh, whoa, whoa. It's cranberry, disgusting. I don't cranberry sauce is not just dis- Beets are fucking are you disgusting. you a geriatric guys. fuck? They, no, beets are not allowed cranberry. in my house. Cranberry sauce, yes. Perfectly fine with a little bit of... look Because some of y'all be having dry ass fucking turkey. And oh, so, but you need that some is the worst. Stuff. Yeah, you need some like, and if I'm grind your if turkey, I, ladies and yeah, gentlemen, if I'm gonna if grind I'm gonna the fucking your turkey. dry ass fucking turkey. Then I need a little bit of cranberry sauce, so I'm not. Can it? Be my mouth is already. Hand? My mouth is already yes. gonna be oh, cotton yeah. mouth. I can't eat some dry ass turkey too. Dog, no. But I'm. <laughs> <laughs> it's another additional road trip in. <laughs>